Good morning, students. I hope you have a happy new year. Today's live lesson will provide tips and additional information to assist you in completing Assignment 8. I will briefly review the agenda so you know what to expect from the video's content. This video is similar to the previous live lesson titled, How to Complete Assignment 4. Some of the content will be the same as it applies to both assignments. I will re review in detail the assignment set of directions. I will also discuss questions from both Part A and Part B to provide clarity. We will then analyze the grading rubric, which should give you a better understanding of the requirements. Finally, I will describe the additional resources that are available to you. To begin our live lesson, let's start with the directions for Assignment 8. As the directions state, be sure to save an electronic copy of your answer before submitting it to Ashworth College for grading. Unless otherwise stated, answer in complete sentences, and be sure to use correct English, spelling, and grammar. Sources must be cited in APA format. Your response should be four double-spaced pages. Refer to the assignment format page located on the course homepage for specific format requirements. The grader will be looking for the appropriate formatting choices, as well as a paper that is approximately four double-spaced pages in length. Another way to look at it is that if your paper is only two double-spaced pages in length, perhaps you might want to review each of your supporting facts and transitional sentences to provide clarity. Spelling and grammar are an important component of your assignment grade 2. Make sure to read and reread your completed assignment to double-check for any errors that, you might, that might distract the reader from the content. In fact, you might have a family member or friend review it, since fresh eyes can often spot problems. The writing lab can even help you with proofreading a document. While these factors are influential to your grade, another issue is that students often do not include a reference section in APA format. It is imperative that you include any resources used to complete this assignment. I will add a link for APA format in the additional resources section of this presentation. Our second topic will be a general clarification of the assignment's questions. Part A focuses on the ways that Toyota's operations might have changed if it focused on low cost instead of quality. For this question, it is important to understand that quality is Toyota's operational strategy, but your response should focus on the hypothetical ways in which the company's operations might change if it did switch to low cost. The second question in Part A compares how FedEx and USPS differ when attracting customers. Make sure to compare FedEx with USPS, the United States Postal Service, not UPS. This response should focus on the business strategies that the FedEx and USPS use to attract customers. Think about the types of customers that typically utilize these organizations and what motivates them to choose one shipping company over another. Part B's question pertains to a hypothetical situation in which Marianne has to decide whether to purchase an existing catering business. The first question in Part B relates to services that can be performed by a non-certified public accountant. It is important to research which tasks a non-certified public accountant can complete, since this professional cannot complete all tasks that a certified public accountant can do. In the second question, the student needs to discuss while the business, why the business having more liabilities than assets would explain the need to sell. Be sure to include substantive supporting facts, such as an analysis of the types of assets or liabilities, or a detailed analysis of the effects that selling would have on the current owner. The third question asks for an indicator, a financial term found within the auditor's report, that should be considered for this decision. Again, it is important to provide quality supporting facts of the financial statement or component of the financial statement that you choose as an indicator. 
Our third topic for today's live lesson is how to use the assignments grading rubric as a roadmap for your success. I will first explain the point breakdown by category and question. On the horizontal row or x-axis, you will observe the categories of exemplary, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and unacceptable. On the vertical column or y-axis, you will observe the assignment's questions. These two components together will create the point value assigned for each section. For example, clear descriptions of at least two ways that Toyota's operations might change if the company switched to low cost will allow for the full credit of 10 points. However, if the student writes at least two ways that Toyota's operations might change if it changed to low cost in a mostly clear manner, only eight points will be awarded. Each of the assignment's questions, as well as spelling, grammar, formatting, and APA references have a row to deduct or receive points. The grading rubric is an incredibly useful tool for you to ensure your responses to the assignment's questions are as complete as possible. Please utilize the rubric to double check your work when submitting, as well as learning from any mistakes that you made when the grader returns your graded assignment. The grader will include not only the point score for each section in the rubric, but also include comments or notes in the last column. Reviewing the grader's notes is one of the best ways to improve your critical thinking skills and writing abilities. Our final topic for today's lesson will be the additional resources that are available to you. These resources are also described in the welcome video and how to com successfully complete this course live lesson, but I am discussing them again here for two reasons. The first reason is simply that you might have not watched the other videos. The second reason is that I will be relating each resource to the assignment when possible. The additional resources that may assist you with completing this assignment are the syllabus, writing lab, ask your faculty, tutorials, general discussion, and email. The syllabus contains tools such as course, policy, and contact information. The course information link also contains learning objectives, the course schedule, and grading requirements. The Writing Lab can assist you with citations, proofreading, and much more. The contact information for the Writing Lab is listed in the Writing Lab announcement. You can find more information on proper citation at apastyle.org. The Ask Your Faculty section contains a chat room where I can answer your questions on a daily basis. I will also meet in this location for my office hours, which are posted on a weekly basis. The Tutorials link contains all previous live lessons, as well as a Frequently Asked Questions section. Our general discussion area, found within the Tutorials link, can also serve as a chat room between students. I will also regularly monitor this area in case I can assist a student with a concern. Lastly, I am available at ckelly at ashworthcollege.edu. I have also created some notes within the Assignment 8 directions that I will attach to this lesson. My notes, which are highlighted within the document, are similar in nature to what is described in the live lesson, but might help you since they are in a different format. I look forward to your success in this course. Thank you for viewing this video on how to complete Assignment 8. Have a great day.